Hi and welcome to my channel. I am going to be doing just a lot of glimmering in this video. So this is just the prep work for a series of cards that I'll be creating. And so you won't see any finished cards here. You're just going to see me glimmer up a storm. So what I am starting with is I've already cut this panel or a sheet of card, um, sorry, glimmer foil down to um, the width of it's already five inches. And then I cut off a section that's three and three quarters. And that gives me actually an even border all the way around the card. And that's how I arrived at three and three quarters. And now what I'm doing is I've taken all of the sort of holiday related sentiments from the new Glitter Wishes Glimmer set. And I am <clears throat> going to glimmer all of these sentiments onto this panel in this diagonal pattern here. And with this first one, I did, I did mess up a little bit. And um, as I was running my uh, sandwich through, I had put it at too severe of an angle. So by the time it got to the, the you know, uh, bottom half of the um, plate combination, it wasn't going to actually fit through the opening. And so I had to backtrack it a little bit and then straighten out the, the glimmer, the sandwich and feed it back through. And in the course of backtracking it in and out, um, some of the glimmer plates moved and I got a little bit of double foiling. You'll, you'll see that in a bit when I reveal this, but that's why I definitely recommend just trying your best to figure out the optimum sandwich, sandwich combination to give you a good foiling. And that may differ just based on the cardstock that you're using. And, um, so you may need to put an extra paper or a cardstock shim to get the uh, amount of pressure to where you can consistently um, get good results. And, um, and then once you're dialed in, just pass your, pass your um, sandwich combination through the one time. Look at this, so, so much fun. So that part did well, but it's this part here. See the best wishes for the season? That plate shifted a little bit. Um, as did the line above it, I think. But ultimately, I think I can cover a lot of that up. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, when I do my glimmering like this, I don't really have any card designs in mind. I'm just playing and, and giving myself a lot of uh, things to work from. So here, I've taken the negative of that plate, uh, of that foil, and I've used the Arches um, Solid Shape Glimmer Plate, which is also a new release this month. And it gives you this beautiful, nice, good size arch also. And this way I can actually use the negative. So check this out. Um, and it's going to just glimmer in that shape. See how cleanly it, um, it all uh, foils? Um, you don't see any extra foil left on the plastic there. So my perfect combination and everybody's machine and, and everything's going to be a little bit different. So what works for me may not work perfectly for you, but I use Hammer Mill um, digital uh, premium color copy paper, a hundred pound. The um, 80 pound, when I glimmer onto black cardstock, it's only 80 pound and that still works very consistently for me as well. 60 to 65 pound I found um, requires a little bit of a cardstock shim to, to get that to uh, foil consistently. And then over 100 pound I do tend to get, like I also have 120 pound cardstock usually for my card bases. But when I've had a scrap piece and I thought, oh, I'll just I'll just glimmer onto this. Um, I usually get a lot of over foiling, uh, which makes sense because 120 pound is thicker. So there's going to be more pressure. But here I'm doing the same thing. And yes, this this technique does take um, a little bit of time and effort to to line up all of these sentiments. But you get so many sentiments from in this glitter wishes set. 
And I would imagine it would look really cool, um, possibly even trying to mix up different size sentiments and tiling it that way. But look at this. Gorgeous. This one turned out perfectly. I always worry when I have to kind of glimmer multiple times um, if, I, if I'm going to get it right every single time. But if you, if you do feel like you finally locked into a good combination, um, remember, just feed it through your machine the one time because every time it goes through, there's the potential that it might shift a little bit on you. So here, here's the negative using the solid arch foil plate. I love, I love this technique. It's, it's a little bit of work, but it's so totally worth it because, um, it just, it's just really special and, um, you get that, that nice shine. So there's, there's four panels ready to go, ready for some card making. Here's what might possibly be my favorite um, glimmer plate from this release. It's called Plaid Tidings. And look at that. It's gorgeous. Um, and I think this would look really good um, as a embossing as well, <laughs> because you can see the plate is actually larger than the, um, the bit of foil that I have here. So where I don't have foil, you know, because your foil does get sort of debossed, pushed into your card a little bit. And, um, I think that would look wonderful. Um, just as a, as a deboss, uh, design without any foil as well. So I might actually have to try that and, uh, but I'm just having too much fun with this. So I chose three colors. So I've got the red, the green, and this gold that has some iridescent shimmer to it as well. Look at that. So pretty. Um, I got a little bit of overfoiling. A little bit surprising considering this is a thinner cardstock. Um, but here I'm going to do some double foiling. So what I'm doing is onto the panel that's been foiled in green on the positive, I took the leftover sheet of gold so that's the negative gold combined with the positive green. And I'm trying to figure out which which way works perfectly. Um, it may take a little bit of trial and error, but if you do have a little bit of overfoiling like I did with the gold, you'll end up seeing a little bit of your white cardstock coming through. Not the end of the world. I think a little bit of that distressed look is, um, you know, it, it's not... A big deal to me anyways. I, I kind of like that. So I actually did this. Um, I'm making two panels with this uh, double foil look. So so check this out. We've got this entire panel is essentially foiled because you have the gold in the background with the green foiling as well. And look how gorgeous that is. So you've got, I've got a little bit of distressing where some of the white cardstock is showing through, but you know, it's, it's, gorgeous. I love this. And then with this one, um, I think I got a little bit more consistent overfoiling so you can actually see, um, or maybe I just offset it a little bit when I was lining it up, but you see a little bit of that white coming through consistently through the striping. I'm not, I'm not mad at that either. I think it's, it's all, um, it just all makes it look a little bit distressed, a little bit more interesting. So, um, so I'm loving this, this plaid because you can really, um, kind of mix and, and match different colors. And so this is just the plain negative of my red. So onto some plain white cardstock. So that has the, um, the cardstock showing through. And then I've got some versions with um, the double foiling. So I've got two colors of foil. Um, so here's the positive is on the right. That's the gold on black. And then the negative is the red on white. And then I've got some combinations of um, double foiled uh, designs. So you can really use everything. You can use that entire sheet of foil. Um, you could get six panels out of this if you didn't want to do the double foiling like I did. 
And so um, you can get quite a lot, especially now having the solid glimmer plates. So what I'm going to do to finish my prep work is just to cut these panels down because they weren't, and I wasn't trying to line them up perfectly. Um, I just wanted to, I just have these pre-cut panels that are four and a quarter by five and a half. And that just makes it a little bit easier for me to um, foil background panels like this. And now I'll go ahead and trim them so that when I do start to make some cards from them, they'll already be sort of um, cut down to size. So here um, I'm trying to just make sure I get rid of all the white or as much as uh, of it as possible. And then I'll figure out mats and layers. They're not going to all be exactly the same size. Um, so I'll figure out, you know, mats and layers later <laughs> when, uh, when I go to make the card and, and maybe I'll have to trim them down even more, but there are a lot of, um, background panels that now I can use in my card making. And with the arch one, there is a set of essential arches dies, nested shape dies. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to die cut larger uh, I think it ends up being either two or three. Um, this is a really great die set because look at how many dies you get. Um, but I ended up going uh, larger than my glimmered panel by, I think it was two, it might have been three sizes up from that. And the reason for that is because I figured I'm, I might want to actually um, add a frame. And that gives me some cardstock to stick my frame onto without losing, without making the arch smaller. And, and that way I can show more of my um, background panel that I work so hard on. So, so that's why I cut with a white border. Um, I'm intending to, to put, to die cut out of some different cardstock and, and cover that white border up. So uh, off camera, I glimmered a lot of um, the sentiments because there's some um, gorgeous scripty sentiments where I've got the Merry and Bright, Merry and Christmas. They each have coordinating dies to cut them out. Then there's a um, part of the parcel and post collection. There are two sets of glimmer sentiments that you can get that go with it. One that's Christmas themed and then the other is more kind of all year round everyday occasions. I chose Christmas because Christmas in July I'm going to be putting a big dent into my Christmas cards from um, just this month's Spellbinders release. In the parcel and post mailbox die set there's actually a rectangular die that's perfect for cutting out these sentiments. Of course you you can use any shape really to, to die cut these out but because I knew that I would be crafting with the mailbox I wanted to um, go ahead and use the die so that I have a lot of options for what I want to put onto the front of my mailbox. I discovered it later but do you see the one that says sending merry wishes and hugs? Um, when I passed, when I die cut this out, I didn't actually, uh, remove the plastic <laughs> and then I die cut it with the plastic and realized it afterwards. And it had this cool effect of distressing the edges. So I think I'm going to be doing that intentionally in the future just to see if, if that's uh, truly the result of die cutting with the plastic on because I kind of like that look. It looks pretty neat in my mind. So I'll be trying that again. So I'm going to actually have um, a series, probably three or maybe even four videos of different cards that I make using um, these glimmered elements that I have foiled. And so I'll, in those videos, continue to reference back to this one. Um, but hopefully this gives you an idea for different ways that you can uh, combine your uh, glimmering and create different looks. Thanks so much for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.